Okay, um, good afternoon. My name is Rosa Patterson. I am the proud assistant principal here at William Henry Spencer High School. And this is our team. Uh, people often say it takes a village to raise a child. I would say this is a part, just a representative, uh, a good representation of our village. And I'm grateful for everyone um, for taking the time out to um, be a part of this discussion today. Um, truly, you deem them as legacy leaders, but they have truly left a legacy here at Spencer High School, and we would not be able to do the things that um, we do without the input from everyone that's involved. Um, so to go back to your questions, um, the first one was, how are you feeling? I would say refreshed, because on average, uh, typically I would get like four to five hours a night of sleep um, from just dealing with administrative things. So with COVID-19, it has allowed us a chance to kind of um, have a little bit more flexibility with our schedule. Um, but for me, I would say refreshed. All right. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. We are now going to hear from Mr. Rayford. Can you please respond to the same prompt? How are you feeling? You have to unmute. <laughs> okay. Do you? Yes. Um, Introduce yourself to, and then we're going to get respond to that same question. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, um, my friends call me Duke, actually, uh, versus Mr. Rayford. So everyone calls me Duke uh, back home and in the Army. Uh, I stayed before I'm a Sergeant Major working in the Pentagon right now. Uh, today is uh, not my best day. Uh, yesterday, for Mother's Day, I had to travel and um, return the body of a uh, departed a deceased soldier to the family uh, yesterday. So kind of feel a little bit emotional. Uh, of course, like being there for the soldier and their family, but um, being Mother's Day, uh, it was kind of rough, you know, but uh, that being said, I'm glad uh, I was able to call in today and I talked to everyone. I look forward to the conversation. All right. Thank you so much. Next, number three, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Lorraine Cody. I'm a parent here, here at Spencer High School. My daughter is a senior at Spencer. How I'm feeling today, I feel I feel good. I really do. Had a wonderful weekend, had a wonderful birthday this weekend as well. So I'm feeling good. Awesome. Thank you so much and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Number four. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Henson, and I am a teacher at Spencer High School. And I absolutely love being at Spencer. And today I am feeling relaxed. Awesome. Thank you for and happy teacher appreciation week to you. Thank you. All right. Number five. I'm Chris Jackson. I am an alumni of Spencer High School and I'm the owner of Celeron LLC, a consulting firm. And I am feeling energized. You know, we, the, over the weekend, we had an opportunity to uh, work with my mastermind group and we came up with some really great opportunities. Um, during post COVID and going forward and things that we can look forward to. So I'm feeling energized. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Number six. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well today. So, um, my name is Vin Hun. Uh, I'm a senior in Spencer. I'm from Vietnam and I have been uh, in US for three years and Today, I, today I feel really, um, excited because be included in this group of people in this call, listen to everyone who are really inspiring. Thank you so much. And thank you for being a student leader and representing. Thank you. Thank you. Number seven. Hello, I'm Alea Gordon, a ninth grader attending Spencer High School. And today, for how I'm feeling, I would say amazing. I'm just watching grades going on Infinite Campus after all the hard work, seeing honor roll grades, all A's, no need to brag. But <laughs> just seeing my hard work go and just spreading the positivity, I feel great. Thank you so much for being a student leader as well, and congratulations on that. Thank you. And last but not least, number eight. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Judson G. I am currently the district and regional command sergeant major for all the Army Junior RTC programs here in the Chattahoochee Valley. Um, I'm a retired soldier of 27 years. Good to see Sergeant Major Rafe. It's been a while since I've seen you at a battle. 
um, and how I'm feeling today, I'm inspired just to uh, be on this call and know that there are leaders all over our nation that are willing to give their time to try and help the future leaders of our country, nation, and world. Awesome. Thank you that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. And thank everyone for their service and their commitment and all your respective positions. I really appreciate all that you're doing. I do believe it takes a village. And so I'll answer as well the same question. Janine Beck, parent, achievement specialist for school culture. Um, and I just am a community builder. I love to serve and help others and to inspire and to, to motivate others. And so today I am feeling grateful for the new connections that I'm making. So the next question that I have, and Ms. Patterson, you're gonna start us off again. The next prompt is, what have you been thinking as the crisis continues to unfold? So what have I been thinking? I've been thinking about a lot um, because in order to make sure that this is a smooth uh, running, a uh, well-oiled machine for our, our school and community, um, I've been Constantly worried about the students, uh, making sure that communication is essential for students, for parents. Um, some people have lost loved ones due to COVID-19. Some people have gotten sick uh, with COVID-19. And so just mental um, health has been a huge concern for me. Thank you for sharing that. Mr. Rayford? Uh, yes, I echo Ms. Patterson's comments. Uh, in my job, I kind of manage the Army installations around the world, and this is going to be a new, new for us moving forward with so many of the families and, and the soldiers. And we're still trying to figure out how to operate in this new environment, especially with the uh, organizations overseas. So right now, my mind's been thinking about what if we, um, in the future, how can we prepare for the next uh, COVID-type outlet that, uh, that might be on the horizon? Thank you for sharing that. Ms. Cody? Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been thinking a lot about um about my child being a senior. I've been thinking about how she has been neglected a lot, um, meaning because she won't be able to participate in a lot of the things that we all, I'm sure, well, except for the students, have participated in, like walking across the stage, uh, going to the prom, uh, saying your final goodbyes to some of your friends at school and stuff. And another thing that really weighs heavy on my heart is I look at the world. And in the world, I see, it, yes, it's a pandemic, but I hate that it took something like this for the world to come together. If we would have been counted together before something like this happened, I think the world would have been a way better place. But I just really hate it took something like this for, for us to come together. I mean, it's not about color. It's not about anything. It just warms my heart now to see how many people are helping each other in a time like this. I mean, it, it just warms my heart how I see even out in the streets uh, when I'm going to the store, how it doesn't matter who you are or what, what nationality or anything. Everybody is just willing to help everyone. But I just hate it took something like this for that to finally get to this point. Thank you so much for sharing. Mr. Henson. I've been thinking about my students a lot, and not just the ones in my classrooms, but you know, the students that spent through high school that I see in the hallway and that I speak to every day. And I, I really miss them. I miss the noise of, of the hallway. I miss uh, hearing them talk. Um, miss those daily interactions with my students. I've been reflecting more on relationships and my spiritual well-being and connecting with, with friends who live in different parts of the country and, and some that live overseas. So I've been trying to find ways to uh, connect with them and make sure that they're okay and we check in every day on each other. So. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right, Mr. Jackson. Well, for me, it's, it's truly multifaceted. The emotional aspects of COVID-19, I went through that rather quickly because I'm down here in New Orleans. So, of course, for us, it started earlier. We've been a lockdown pretty much since the beginning of March. So the emotional aspects of it were rather rapid. Once the family was secure, I was able to move forward. But the, the, the two things that are probably I thought about the most was what does our community look like going forward? How do we 
um, look at this landscape and figure out what are the opportunities that we can take advantage of to grow our communities, to improve our communities. What resources can we bring in to to rebuild our communities? What does our what does our community look, smell, taste like post COVID? And what does that mean for us as leaders? You know, how do we um, look at the financial situations and say, okay, these are opportunities for us as well. And then lastly, it's um, it's highlighted the the divide in our country. The second thing that's been the, the most interesting to me or introspective to me is the divide in our country. You know, what are the what are the underlying causes of such a great divide? And uh, are these things new or have they, all, have they always existed? And then what does that mean after, you know, we come out? Because now the veil has been pulled back for many people. And now we're seeing some authentic sides of people that we didn't know existed before. So what does that mean for our communication? Um, not just in our communities, but to global partners, to um, fiscal um, partners as well. And how does that play out? Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Mr. Hien? Hello. So to me, I've been thinking about my school, my um, classmates, my teachers a lot because I miss them and I miss my community. Also, um, I'm a little bit worried because uh, my my parents, my family, they get back to the business like in this month. And uh, I'm a little bit worried because the pandemic is still out there, the COVID is still out there. But I try to get myself calm and get the positive energy so um and stay connected with others to make everybody is okay and calm to um face what's going on and I believe that everything is gonna be okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Ms. Gordon? Yes, what I've been thinking about is everyone's else, well, everyone else's safety and health throughout this whole thing, especially because I have family members living in states with high cases. But at the same time, I just try to keep that inner peace and also spread that peace so that everyone can just be okay and not freak out totally. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And Mr. G. Okay, what I've been thinking about the most is what does the future look like? How do we move forward um, as a community, as a state, as a nation, as a world? Um, obviously, I can't control any of that. So what I really focus my attention and my thought process on is what can I do as an individual to um, to shape what tomorrow looks like, specifically for the graduating seniors, like the parents said, that um, they won't they won't get this back. This time will never come again. They'll never be in high school again. It's over for them. So what can I do uh, as a small piece to, to give them something to remember, to cherish um, going forward? Thank you. And I share in the thoughts that I've heard from many of you. I, I have a high school senior and she's headed to Hampton in the fall. Hopefully I'm thinking about whether or not Hampton will even open up. I'm thinking about my six-year-old first grader and helping with uh, Schoology during the day while I'm also working. And so just multitasking and being successful, you know, as a for former administrator, you know, you want to make sure the grades are good. But honestly, I'm thinking more about his social, emotional health and his mental state. And so it's been care over content for me. Um, we get our work done, but we really focus on being family oriented, laughing, walking together, exercising doing dance and just having fun as a family and those family connections. I've also benefited um, from connections that as a high paced administrator oh, for years, I didn't take advantage of. I, I went for the first time to a virtual girls high school uh, Zoom reunion. I haven't, I haven't been able to make it to Philadelphia to go home to do those reunions. And so for the first time, and it's been, since we've been home, we've done it three times already, every two weeks, our girls high class of 237 is checking in just to say hello and checking on each other. Um, the ladies of Howard University, um, Miss Camille uh, Smith Franklin started a group that grew in several days to over 10,000 members that are ladies of Howard University. And we've been connecting and posting and just checking on. And so I have been thinking about how we can continue this energy, this creative passion that I'm seeing and this care from all over um, as we continue to move forward. 
So thank you. Our next question is, um, we all have a lot on our mind, but what are some positive things that you are doing that is still in your control? We have the restrictions in terms of going places, um, but we also have options. Um, it's not our circumstances, it's our decisions sometimes. And so what are the things that you've decided to do to remain positive, um, to do things that are positive, or what are you doing that are in your control? If you want to share one or two things that you're doing. Some of you have already shared, so if you um, want to pass, that's fine. But if you want to share some of the, some more of the positive things that you're doing that's in your control, um, I would love to hear them. So for, so for me, I would say some positive things that are in my control that we've been doing is uh, I think I'm Chef Boyar Patterson now because <laughs> I've been trying out so many dishes um, since I've been home and having more flexibility to be able to cook and try out new things. I've also challenged my student ambassadors to cook as well. And so hopefully Ben can find that. Um, I think he did a, a sesame seed chicken or Vietnamese spicy chicken or something. Um, but I've challenged oh, yeah. students. I'm sorry. Korean chicken, Korean okay. spicy chicken. There we go. And so they've been sending me all kind of pictures. Uh, I think Mr. Henson, he did a, a pound cake. Uh, and that was something new. So cooking, uh, we're gaining weight. <laughs> we're trying to exercise a little bit more. But cooking has been a positive thing in our control um, that we've been able to share different recipes uh, with one another. Uh, I would also say um communication. Uh, several people actually have my cell number, and so they'll send text messages if they have concerns because I want to minimize um, frustration for the parents and for the students. And one of the best ways you can do that is through communication. So like, for example, if Ms. Cody has a question, she doesn't have to email and wait for somebody to respond. She could just send me a quick text. I'll quickly respond back, and that will minimize frustration for parents. So I would say cooking and communication for me. All right. Thank you for that. I love those ideas. Uh, Mr. Rayford. Yeah. So on, uh, in, my, in my day job, I think uh, because uh, normally the army focus on uh, mission related uh, things. And the last couple of months, we've been kind of forced to focus on the people. And uh, I was told a lot more. Uh, we've had time to reflect on how we treat, you know, our soldiers. But not just our soldiers, but our uh, I've had more time the last 90 days to kind of get around and, and do town halls, virtual and face-to-face. -face. A lot of that members to kind of spend them because I realized we have, they've done a poor job over the years at communicating. So if anything, this has taught us, you know, we, we got to do a better job and we can. Uh, we really started to focus on uh, what's important versus just being busy. And um, we got to that point, you know, we're just being busy. We work versus doing the right thing, take care of soldiers and families. And on the positive side back home, um, you know, we have some key right now, and I think I've had more conversations with them over the last month, uh, between Cash App too, but I mean, <laughs> conversations, uh, about what it, uh, and I had a long time, you know, I know it's, uh, I'm, I'm busy myself, but, uh, it's been a, a while uh, since they started contacting me every day, and I've also um, actually met uh, a lot of new classes. Uh, this, this is the time of year that uh, my class, per se, we start planning for events in August. I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year. We do a, a charity basketball game, so it may not happen this year. But I did see an uptake of other classes, uh, a lot of younger classes, asking and reaching out, you know, what can they do for the school? I haven't seen that in the last 15 years. So I'm not sure what triggered all that, but it, it was a good trigger now because I think moving forward, we will have a lot of I kind of participated in not just the sporting events and the stuff we do in the summer, but during the year, uh, as far as about with the school. So, uh, those are my two things. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Ms. Cody? Yes, ma'am. I think, um, one of the biggest things I, I can say is, quality time uh being a parent a single parent or what have you and with my child being very active at spencer it seemed like i would get off work and go straight to spencer go to the volleyball game go to the soccer game we wouldn't get home to nine ten o'clock after we eat we got to go straight to bed and do it all over again but now sitting back well sitting back thinking i know we're in a pandemic but then again on a 
flip side, it's a blessing because it gave us, it gave me and my daughter this time to bond, to have that quality time together because as of July, she's going into the Navy. So I, I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay, this high quality time together. And um, something else we have been doing, I would say, we've been walking. We've been taking evening walks and that that's been fun. And those are my two things. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Henson. Okay. Um, well, yes, I've been experimenting in the ki- in the kitchen, um, testing the limits of my insulin pump. <laughs> so uh, I've been reading books, um, doing some on- online book studies with church group, and um, working in my yard. I have uh, about 40 bags of mulch. I've got 20 of them put out and 20 more to put out. So I've been I've been trying to stay busy. Sounds like it. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that – I'm sorry. Ready? Yes. <laughs> you were ready. I, yeah, I, I think I've learned that the uh, the honey-do list is a bottomless pit. <laughs> so it is never-ending. Um, but for me, the biggest thing for us has definitely been the quality time. Yes, of course. I, that That's my life. <laughs> And so um, the biggest thing for us has been, um, you know, quality, quality time. You know, like, just as Ms. Cody said, our family's been, you know, we're go, go, go. Our kids are constantly um, in one activity to the next. And, you know, we were like that 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night getting home and, you know, then getting up the next morning, 6 o'clock, doing it again the next day. So it was like this virtual, not this perpetual cycle that we were on. And so that's one thing. We've been able to sit down and play games and, you know, we, we, we even taught our kids how to play card games. Cause look, just in case you go to HBCU, you're going to use the skills you're going to need. So, so, you know, little things like that that we haven't had an opportunity to do. And then I think the second thing is, um, positive has just been, um, like I said, exercise and cooking and, and having opportunities to just talk. You know, we've wanted to have a, a bigger imprint on our children, but now we actually have the time to do that. Uh, community wise, and I just want to add this one more thing. Community wise for us, being in New Orleans, it's, it's, it's been devastating to see how this whole thing has played out. And, you know, what, and again, trying to figure out, you know, how can we better serve our community and what can we do? Not just, you know, cause we're in the medical field as well. How do we do this from a medical side and being able to provide those resources? So positively for us, it's just been, you know, where can we serve and, you know, what are the opportunities for, and being, a, being able to have more quality time as a family? Awesome. Thank you. You have a wonderful wife, clearly a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Mr. Him. Yes, ma'am. So I've been trying to get myself busy, uh, productive and, uh, influence. So, so, um, I'm the lead, I'm one of the leaders of my organization. It's called, uh, Your Unique Understanding Organization. This is a, organization in Vietnam and basically we have to improve uh, the local, the Kongtum province, which is a poor area area in Vietnam and we also have the children there and so far we just finished a project uh, remote about women rights and uh, feminism in uh, Vietnam and we are working on to build an online class for the children, especially the children in the orphan's house, uh, in quantum. And because we several, we created the programs, the, the classroom every summer to help the children, uh, prepare before the school start. Um, and this year we, it's inconvenient for us to meet the children in person. So we are making an online class for them to uh to learn and basically uh we will talk to them and teach them english uh lit- Vietnamese literature and math and for the next project we are gonna we're gonna make a summer camp for the children to play and also we are trying to transform 
and uh, our page, our website to into bilingual English and Vietnamese. So make sure we can like reach out outside of the Vietnam. We don't want to limit our organization just inside the Vietnam. So the positive thing is that um, I'm working with my team, my company to give back to the community and contribute to my culture. So that's it. All right, you have to love technology. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. I'm talking and you're not hearing. I stopped my video. Okay, this is about being live. Gord, Miss Gordon, I think you're next. Yes, the positive things that I would say are lots of prayer. And me and one of my closest friends, actually, we FaceTime since we can't see each other. And we FaceTime and we challenge each other with these ultimate exercises but this quarantine weight gain is getting real it really is <laughs> so we just challenge each other and try our best to stay active awesome i love that thank you so much and mr g yeah i think the question is what am i doing the, what am i controlling during the pandemic um i've always been a competitor uh, so I've challenged all of my retired uh, battle buddies worldwide to a fitness challenge. Um, the goal is to eventually get up to 100 miles a week. Uh, right now I'm leading. Uh, I've got one friend that's um, up in the Atlanta area. He's close on my heels, so I've got to step up my game. Uh, second thing I'm controlling is really uh, reconnecting with the family, um, something we haven't done. Probably in the last 10 years, we have every evening we have family family game night. So we play some sort of board game just to, again, we're all competitive to uh, to compete, have fun, and just get to know each other a little bit better and kind of our dreams, hopes, and aspirations. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, Rosa, if you can let Tyler know, I'm going to put that same challenge out to the Boy Scout troop uh, to walk at least. 20 miles a week, um, and we will. I will come up with a a means of uh, analyzing and recording everyone's uh, activity. Awesome, great idea. So I am a music lover. So I have been taking songs where I love the beat of the music, and I've been doing write overs and making up like songs on my own, using my own words to either inspire, motivate, vent, whatever it may be. And so if you follow me on Janine Cares, if you already looked it up, you may have seen some of the videos that I've created um, using my family members, using myself, talking about my experiences. But this humor is something that I appreciate, music and humor. Um, I've also created a lot of virtual groups um, to be able to connect. And I started this Janine Cares. And Janine Cares stands for caring, achieving, restoring, empowering, and supporting. And so while I was trained as a licensed trainer, I'm volunteering time to teach others about what it means to be a restorative practitioner and how you can do things such as what we're doing today to build community um, and just connecting. So I have a group on Facebook called Restorative Leadership 101. I have a group called Friends and Family and Faith because my faith has been the thing that really has been able to get me through this um, crisis and every challenge or obstacle that I have overcome in life. And so that's one thing. And then I have a professionally Mrs. Moms group where I feel like I'm just trying to connect with the people that are kind of in my same work or like, you know, working, being a mom, being married. And so just trying to find all the things that I'm a part of to connect with others and share, you know, happy stories, challenges and things like that. So those are some of the things that I've been doing. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been great to get to know you and to hear um, what you're doing in your communities. Um, and because you all have the connection of Spencer, what advice do you have for youth and parents and the Spencer community that you feel that they watch this, they could benefit from? And so think about it from a lens of someone who will be maybe walking in your footsteps and go with it from that aspect, please. So I think, um, first of all, let me respond to Sergeant Major uh, G. Um, he said he 
does 100 miles a week. I struggle doing my 2.3 miles on May 8th. So I don't know. Tyler can do the 20 miles. We're going to work together to try to get that done. So uh, challenge accepted, sir. Um, advice. I would say advice to the parents would be we're in this fight with you. Um, the, the same way that the students miss their friends, our teachers miss the students and they miss working together as colleagues. So we're in this fight together. Um, to the students, I would tell you that we're working very hard behind the scenes to make sure that you receive the support that you need. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and you may see the result of it, but sometimes there's a lot of hard, hard work that goes into that. Um, for our top 10 students, um, Ben, by the way, is our salutatorian um, for the school. And for our top 10 students, we um, actually delivered signs to every home of the students who were in the top 10. And so that took some coordination and planning and money to be able to, to make happen. I know it was just a small gesture, but just to remind you that we appreciate the hard work um, that you're doing. To our alumni, I would say um, continue to do what you're doing. And the kids are standing on your shoulders just like you stood on someone else's shoulders. Um, continue to do what you're doing and reaching out to the students. Um, more than anything, the communication I think is important. That uh, whole idea of having the oral history passed down, I think was a lost art until COVID-19 hit. But it's forcing us now to really work on communication skills. So I would say, uh, you know, being transparent, Mr. Henson has been working with me um, doing the calls that we do. Uh, we started out doing them every day um, to pull in different people from different professions to be able to talk to our kids about challenges and things they've experienced. And I think everyone on the screen has either presented on the call or listened in on a call. And we learned a lot about each other. And I told Mr. Henson, the calls inspired me more than they did probably the students because they gave some good tips. And we were just texting back and forth like, oh, my gosh, you hear that quote? I'm writing that down. And what book is that again? And so the sharing of information, I think, is truly important. But just knowing that I think people get frustrated when they think that they're, it's just them. They're in isolation. I'm the only person that's gaining weight. I'm, I'm the only person that's feeling sad or missing the students. I'm the only, you're not. You know, everybody is struggling with the same exact thing. And so when you know that, it builds a bigger community of support and reaching out, just like I think this call would do. Thank you. Mr. Rayford? Yeah. So uh, I, I guess my advice would be for. I had a briefing on actually Friday with a bunch of younger sergeant majors, and it's funny when I say younger because I'm the old guy in the room now uh, as, far, as far as the Army. But I firmly believe if you have the ability to make things better, you have the responsibility. So this to everyone, you know, small, large, whatever it is, if you got some kind of way to make things better, you have to start doing that. Um, second piece would be the, and, and people have talked on this already, your spiritual, your physical, your mental, and your financial health. You can't fall backwards on this after we pass this COVID. You know, I've, I've been through other things in my lifetime, and we, you know, we're concerned with ourselves and our families, and then as soon as things get back better, we rip back to our old habits. So I would just say continue to focus on those areas because it's very important that you maintain that, especially you students, uh, over the next your, your lifetime. You know, I, I told the students last time that I waited years down the road to figure out what, what I was going to do. I wasted many years in the Army uh, just coming to work every day before I got focused. So I just say, hey, if you got the ability to do something, then do it. If not what you told you to do it, don't think it's a bad idea. Don't think it's my idea. You know, you got it, you bring it. And like I said, uh, the physical fitness thing, the spiritual fitness thing, stay with it. Stay with it. Health is important. Finance is important. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your words. Ms. Cody, our parents. Yes, ma'am. Um, the advice that I would give somebody would be get involved more. Um, being, being a parent here at Spencer High School, I see sometimes a lot of parents are not involved like they should be. And a lot of the lot, uh, it's a lot of teachers and administrators that go over and beyond for the students at that school. And it's amazing the family oriented, 
how it is at Spencer. And if you're not involved, if you don't come around, you wouldn't know that. And even by my child, something I told her, I said to help someone is, a blessing and everybody's talking about how can we go on as a community something I told her I said you're going on into the Navy I said yes you're my only child but what I'm going to do is from now on I'm going to sponsor a senior every year to for somebody who can't maybe pay their dues or get their class t-shirt who maybe can't even pay for their volleyball dues or soccer dues or something like that because they have the, the school has to get the money from somewhere and um and I challenged my daughter the same thing and she told me she said yes mom I'm gonna do that too so she already told one of her friends next year I'm paying your soccer dues and if we as a community start start doing things like that we'll be able to go for it we got to help one another. That's just the bottom line. For us to go for it, we got to get in there. We got to help and work. That's all. That's 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 my, that's what all I have to say. Thank you so much, and you said it well. Thank you so much. Mr. Henson. Do I have to go after that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a mic drop, Miss <laughs> Cody. That, that uh, you know, that's one of the great things about Spencer is that, that family coming together to support one another. So thank you, Miss Cody. I, I've seen it all year long, but that really sums it up. So thank you, Miss Cody. My, my advice um, would be to always ask someone how they're doing and be in that moment with them. You know, there will probably be, I'm sure, well, will be a lot of mental health issues that come from this quarantine and especially with our young people. But when I talk to my students, I don't talk just about academics with them. I talk about how they're doing. I ask them how they're doing. And even though they may say, oh, I'm okay, sometimes they may open up and say, well, I'm struggling with this or this is bothering me. But at least they know that you've asked and, and that you care. So my advice would be just always check in and ask someone, are, are they okay? Absolutely. Thank you. I am also concerned about the mental health. All right. Next up, Mr. Jackson. Awesome. Well, first thing as a parent, I will always say that, you know, they're watching us. And this is this is probably the prime time where we have the opportunity to set really good standards for our children. So as a parent, just be cognizant of that. You know, they're they're watching you learn risk behaviors, and you know, good and bad. And so for us, it's just an opportunity to look inside and be, be more cognizant and be more present and be aware for our children. Um, secondly, for the, for the students, um, set goals, do new things. And, you know, there are no failures in life. Everything is an opportunity to learn and learn to extract the, the value and the lesson from every experience. And the more things you try, the more you grow. And then I will also say, always be a lifelong student. You never have this thing called life figured out. You know, it's a, it's a constantly moving goalpost, if you will, and it's constantly evolving. And you have to be evolving with it. And that's one of the, the greatest gifts that's allowed me to, to be able to, to open up so many doors. It's just like um, my, good, my, my good friend Duke was saying, you know, I wasted a lot of time. I spent um, nine of my 11 years in the Air Force, like you said, just showing up for work. And trying to figure it out. It wasn't until those last two years where I really understood and found my purpose and got really serious about that. And that's okay to just do. Sometimes you got to go forward and be in the process of moving in order to find what you're great at. But don't sit still and wait for it to happen. You know, it's a constant, active process in learning. And then lastly, we'll talk about your emotions. Um, learn to master your emotions. You know, the, the quality of your life is a direct proportion to the quality of your emotions. So learn to choose your emotions wisely and then learn to ask the right questions. You know, if something happens, it doesn't, it, it's not necessarily good or bad. It only, the only meaning it has is what you give it. So, you know, ask yourself, what does this mean? And then choose an emotion based on that question instead of, you know, choosing a reactionary emotion. Those emotions are probably one of our, our most valuable tools for our, our, our antennas, if you will, for the world. And then lastly, um, what if it's all God's grace? You know, anything that happens to you in life, 
is not necessarily um, for you to feel bad about it. You know, what if it's all grace? What if that 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 setback was a thing that put you in a position for, you know, the greatest opportunity and blessing in your life and not get so caught up in things because nothing is permanent. Any situations that we endure, they're not permanent. Anything that can be changed, it can be changed in a snap. But that really, that really depends on your ability to maintain control of those emotions and stay focused in that space. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Mr. Hearn, you ready? Yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. So first of all, I want to thank you for the advices that are really meaningful and valuable for me. So, and my advice for uh, everyone is um, we have to stay healthy. We have to build ourselves a strong health to face with any problems and struggle. And from what I learned from Spencer, for who have a dream, have a goal, or what they want to do, just be bold and confident to do it. And show no fear. Don't don't fear to fail. Don't fear to fall because I know. It doesn't matter how we fall. It matter how we stand up, and the way we stand up will prove that um, we succeed. So that's my advice. Awesome! I love that. Thank you thank so you. much for sharing it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Miss Gordon. Yes. First, I wanted to say that this whole chat from everyone who has spoken, it's amazing and so uplifting. I'm glad that I can participate in this. And my advice would be to not let shyness hold back success because me, I'm a shy person, but I've learned and I'm still learning that you can't stay in your comfort zone and expect growth. You have to get out and try new things, which leads me to my next point is to not settle for the minimum. For example, I'm, of course, as you all know, in the ninth grade, but in my algebra class, when I was done with my work, because my work is easy for me, so when I was done with my work, I would ask my teacher, hey, um, can I try some 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade math even, just to try it out. Just try new things and see. If one thing is easy, go to the next. Just don't settle just because that's all you have to do. Ask for new things and see if you can do that the same way or if it's easier. Thank you so much. I love that both of our students are sounding really prophetic to me. So thank you, Spencer community, for your leadership and what you're doing with these students. Thank you. All right. Next up, Mr. G, bring it up to me. I have, uh, I have three points of advice for uh, not only students, but uh, all of us. Um, preparation plus opportunity is will equal success. And what I mean by that, um, don't procrastinate. Do what you need to do today because today is the only thing that you have to prepare for tomorrow. And if you make it to tomorrow, you're that much more prepared. So always push yourself because when that opportunity does present itself, if you're prepared, you're going to succeed. You're going to get that job. You're going to get into that school. Whatever it is you want to do, if you're prepared, uh, your chances of being successful have uh, have been great. Your attitude will always determine your altitude. I mean by that is if you have a positive attitude, um, people will see that. They will take note of that. And they're more prone to uh, give you a hand up as opposed to a handout. Um, they'll help you get to that plateau or that next level that you're looking for. But if you have a bad attitude, a negative attitude, focus on the negative things, negative things typically are going to come your way. And lastly, um, you're going to get knocked down. Um, I served 27 years in the military, had an opportunity to go all over the world, and I failed. I failed a lot in my military career. Um, but I didn't let those failures define me. It's okay to get knocked down, but it's not acceptable to stay down. You have to always get up, like uh, Mr. Han said, get up, stand up, and continue to push, continue to drive, continue to fight, continue to prepare, because – no situation, like Brother Jackson said, lasts for always. It's always, there's always a brighter day coming ahead. It may not be the next day, it may not be the next week, but you keep pushing, keep preparing, and there will be some success and some bright days in your life. 
Awesome. This has been great for me. This is the best lunch hour that I've had in a long time. So I really, really appreciate your time. Um, I think for me, advice is to continue first what you are already doing. You are all leading in your respective ways. You've all had experiences that you can share um, with others that will help them in their journey of being legacy leaders as well. Um, as a principal, former principal, I, I had the motto of lead, and it was leadership, empathy, achievement, and determination. As a community builder now, what I'm looking at is lead again, and so I've created a new tag for it, and it's learning, and it's doing all the learning. I'm a lifelong learner as well, starting from the age of two, learning Suzuki violin all the way up to now. I'm working on my doctorate at George Washington University, so always be a learner. Um, and then empower others. You've had this experience. You have the questions. Take them and use them with another community with, that you're in, uh, whether it be student groups, whether it be your family, whether it be Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, anything, and, and empower others to do it, model it for them, and do it again with them. Um, also, uh, I believe in the ability to achieve and we want to action plan in order to achieve and so the a would be how will you be planning i like that mr g what you said earlier about being prepared and that is really really important so as you think about your great idea that you might do or continue to strengthen what you're already doing make sure you have an action plan because you never know if somebody's going to tap you for your idea and want to see it in writing and so have that plan and then dream big and uh, encourage others to do the same thing. So that's how we're going to lead in 2020 and 2021 and beyond. From my perspective, I thank you, thank you, thank you for your time today. I thank you for your leadership. I encourage you all to connect with me on social platforms. I'm on Twitter at FCPS Restorative and other places. Just Janine Cares has been my tagline. And um, yes, if you want to close us out uh, with a one word response about your experience today in this virtual community circle. Um, if you can give me one word that describes how you feel about this experience that we just did today. So one word and then we will say goodbye. Hey, my one word is actually two. Um, <laughs> can, 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 I, can I like push just one? Okay. Um, it can be two. Okay. Two. Have it hyphenated. Okay, two, two, Rosa. Okay, so I see this group as problem solvers. You okay. guys are amazing. Y'all bring solutions to the table. They will bring problems to me, but before they ask a question, it's like, look, here's how we can fix it. So I see this uh, group of legacy leaders as problem solvers, and that's important to me. So I thank all of you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Rayford, one word. Enlightening. Enlightening. All right. Thank you. Uh, Miss Cody, one word. Uplifting. Uplifting. Thank you. Mr. Henson, one word. Encouraging. Encouraging. Thank you. All right. Mr. Jackson, one word. Uh, grateful. Grateful. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hen. I would say it's inspiring and fantastic. Okay. I know it's too worse. <laughs> That's all right. You get it from Miss Patterson. It's all good. <laughs> okay. All right. Miss Gordon. I would have to say joyful. It's just filled with a bunch of joy. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. G. Hopeful. Awesome. Thank you. And I'll close this out with community. And I think that's really what it's all about is building community. So thank you to the Spencer community for being legacy leaders in different places, checking in virtually today. We thank you for your leadership and I look forward to staying connected with you. Janine, can we